Okay, so we now know how to actually find permutations. That is, the different ways of selecting things from a collection where the order matters. And we saw, in fact, that if we wanted to take a look at all the different ways of placing these uh, three blocks down in a certain order, you know, yellow, uh, yellow, blue, green, yellow, blue, green, that there are six. There are six. Now, the question is, suppose I just want to pick two of them out, just pick two of them out, but order doesn't matter. Order doesn't matter. So I don't care if it's going to be uh, yellow or blue. It could be blue, yellow. I don't care. But I'm just picking out this particular grouping. Well, then how many would there be of that? Well, if you think about it, there would be, I just counted twice. Because blue, yellow is here, but then yellow, blue was over here. So I counted those things twice. Blue, green, I counted here, but then um, green, blue, I counted here. And yellow, blue, I counted, uh, yellow, green, I counted here. And green, yellow, I counted here. So basically, I counted everything twice. So I took this answer of six and divided it by two. That would give me the correct answer of just three. There are three different ways. There's this way. There's this way, and then there's this way. So there's three ways of picking two things if order doesn't matter. And in fact, this is exactly how all the lottery games, the state lottery games, are played. You have to select numbers, right, from like 1 to 50 or something, but the order that they come out out of that you know, thing spitting out the ping pong balls doesn't make a difference. All you care about is what the numbers are themselves. Order is irrelevant. So how do you actually figure out the number of ways of choosing things if order doesn't matter? Well, these are actually called combinations. So a combination is just the order uh, when, the, uh, it's just the number of ways of selecting things when order does not matter. So suppose I have a collection of n things, and I want to see how many different ways there are for me to select r of them. But order doesn't make a difference. Well, first of all, I'd write this as c of n choose r. This means I have n things, and I want to see how many different ways there are of me picking r of them where order doesn't make a difference. I don't care. So if I pick blue and then red and then versus red then blue, those are the same things. That's called a combination. And this is red uh, n choose r. n things, and I'm going to choose r of them. And what's the formula? Well, the first thing I do is I look at all the different ways of me just picking uh, r things. Well, that's the permutation. That's the permutation, which we just talked about. So that's just n divided by n minus r factorial. I'm sorry, n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. Or if you would read this out loud, n divided by n minus r because of the factorial. OK, but think about it. Here, with the permutation, order matters. Now I don't care about the order, so I want to get rid of all the repetitions. Well, how many different ways are there to order those r things I pick out? Well, that was the very first thing we talked about. That's r factorial. That's the total number of ways of ordering r things. And I want to get rid of all of them, so I'll just divide this by r factorial. And there's the formulation. There's the formula for, um, for combination of n choose r things. So let me look at an example. Suppose you have a, a deck of regular uh, 52 cards. Oh, in fact, let me. Uh, Set up my little casino here. It's casino night here, folks. And so you can see this is regular playing cards and so forth and so on. Well, suppose you're being dealt five cards for like poker or something. Well, a question that's reasonable to ask and is necessary in computing sort of likelihoods is how many different possible hands are there of five cards? Now, with the hand, this is the four of diamonds, the six of hearts, the two of clubs, the eight of hearts, and the six of clubs. Of course, order doesn't matter. To me, this hand is the same thing as that hand, and it's the same thing as this hand, and it's the same thing as this hand. It's just this hand. So in fact, order doesn't matter. I just want to know how many different ways are there of me picking five cards out of 52. Well, let's see. That would just be 52 choose 5. And so that would be just c of 52 comma 5. 52 things, I want to choose 5, but order doesn't matter. So that's going to be 52 factorial divided by, and I have r, r is 5, so 5 factorial, multiplied by n minus r. So that's going to be what? That's going to be 52 minus 5, which is going to be um, 47 factorial. 
Okay, now what does that equal? Well, uh, you can plug that into a calculator, or we could simplify that a teeny weeny bit. Let me just show you that you can simplify it a teeny weeny bit. Because you can write out a few of these uh, terms here. So that's going to be 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48. And then I'm just going to put in times 47 factorial, because that's the rest of it. 47, 46, 45, and so forth. Then on the bottom, I have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But then I just have times 47 factorial. And what you notice is the 47 factorials can cancel. So all I have to do, all I have to do, that's still a lot, is take 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48 and divide it by 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And if you work that out on a calculator, what you see is 2,598,960. That is the total number of different possible five deals of five you can possibly get. From a, from a 52 uh, card regulation playing deck. And I just found it by looking at the combinations, the combinations. So now what I thought I would do is just end, in fact, by uh, actually bringing one of my distinguished uh, colleagues in the mathematical community to sort of give his commentary on, uh, on this kind of thing, because he's an expert. He's a combinatorist, in fact, and an expert on sort of this card counting and things and so forth. So to sort of recap and sort of summarize this, I want to bring in this expert. So please welcome a special guest lecture appearance by the Punching Monkey. Please welcome him. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, so now I'm going to give you the lecture. This is my commentary. This is what I think about combinatorics, and here we go. So what you got to do is you got to punch out those things. you got to count all different ways of doing it. So what do you got to count first? You first have to count and say, okay, how many are there? Come on, come on. Show me, show me what you got. Show me what you got. Come on, where are you? Okay, so then you say, okay, I got 52 decks. I got 52 cards. I got 52 cards, and I want to see how many I can pick out at five. Five, five, pow, pow. So I put in 52 right here. Boom, 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 boom. And then what do I do? I put in the five here, right here, and then I take 52 minus the 5, and that's 47. Factorial! Factorial! <laughs> Zoom in on me. I want you to see this. I'm talking factorial. You've got to pay attention. It's factorial. And then you compute it. And it's 52 times 51 times 50 times 48 and 49. 47 factorial. And a 47. You cancel. You just cancel them. That's all you do. That's all you do. And you get the answer. 2 million. Wow. It's 2 million. That's combinatorics. That's the combination. 